Hello everyone, I'm Sarah of Bridge Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the beautiful wildflower shawl and I have my sample here in front of me. This is the wildflower shawl. It is made with a fingering weight yarn and the yarn that I'm showing you here is by Fleece and Harmony, which is a company in Prince Edward Island. They have some beautiful hand dyed um, minimally processed organic yarn and the colors are absolutely stunning. This is the color Thistle, uh, which I don't believe is available at the moment, but they have other lots of gorgeous colors available for you to check out. Now, uh, this is a lightweight lace shawl and embedded in the lace are these little tiny beautiful flowers. And then it features a simple edging. The shawl, as I've worked it here, uh, measures about 17 by 67 inches and it's made with a 100% wool as I've mentioned. Uh, for the shawl you're going to need a little less than 1200 yards which was approximately three skeins of uh, this flock fingering yarn. You're also going to need a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook and in the description of this video you'll find links to both of these items as well as the link to the free written crochet pattern which is on richtexturescrochet.com. So thank you so much for joining me. This is an intermediate pattern, uh, but it is fairly easy to catch on to. I've only put it as intermediate because of the variety of stitches that you'll find in it, but it's absolutely beautiful. So uh, let's grab our hooks and yarn while you're here. I invite you to take a look around. There's lots of other gorgeous shawl patterns here. Uh, and also don't forget to subscribe. Now our pattern today is worked in rows and it's worked lengthwise. So you're going to be working that long edge first. What we're going to do is start by making your slip knot. And then by working a foundation chain and your foundation chain will need to be 366 chains. And that's going to give us about 55 inches of length. So go ahead, chain 366 chains. Once you have worked your foundation chain of 366 chains, you're then going to work a double crochet into the fourth chain from your hook. So count in one, two, three, four. Into your fourth chain from your hook, work one double crochet. Your chain three at the beginning does count as a stitch. You're then going to work one double crochet stitch into each stitch all the way across. Once you come all the way across at the end of row one, you're going to chain four. and then turn your work. The chain four at the beginning of your row counts as one double crochet stitch and a chain one space. For row two, you're going to skip the first stitch, which is at the base of your turning chain. You're going to skip the next stitch and then into your next work one double crochet. Chain one, skip one, and double crochet into the next stitch. Repeat that all the way across, chain one, skip one, double crochet into the next stitch, all the way across. When you come to your final stitch, uh, you can chain four and turn your work. When you come across, to those final stitches in your row two, uh, don't forget to work into that turning chain as it counts as a stitch. At the end of your row two, chain four and turn your work. For row three, you're going to skip the first stitch, skip 
the next chain one space and double crochet into the top of the next double crochet stitch. Remember that chain four counts as a double crochet and a chain one space. You're then going to chain one, skip the next chain one space, double crochet into the top of the next double crochet stitch. Repeat that all the way across chain one, skip the space, double crochet into the next stitch. Repeat it all the way across and uh, ending with a double crochet in that chain three, the third chain of your starting chain four. At the end of your row three, when you come across, you're going to chain one, skip the next chain, and then double crochet into the third chain of that starting chain four. Chain four, and turn your work. For row four, this is going to be the first row uh, where we begin our flower blossoms. So skip that first chain one space and double crochet into the next stitch. Then chain four. And we're now going to work our first cluster stitch. You're going to skip the next chain one space and then work your cluster stitch over the next five stitches. Your double crochet, chain one, double crochet, chain one, double crochet. To work your cluster stitch, yarn over, insert your hook into the top of the next double crochet stitch, yarn over, and draw up a loop. Do that two more times into the same stitch. Yarn over, insert your hook into the same stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop. One more time, yarn over, insert your hook into the same stitch, yarn over, and draw up a loop. Next, skip the next two chain one spaces. So there's one chain one and two chain ones and also that double crochet there in the middle. Then yarn over into the next stitch, work your uh, cluster stitch there. So there's, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, draw up a loop. Do that total of three times. Yarn over all into the same stitch, insert your hook into that same stitch, yarn over, draw up a loop. One more time, yarn over, insert your hook into that same stitch, yarn over, and draw up a loop. When you are finished, you are going to have a total of 13 loops on your hook. Yarn over and draw through all 13 loops. That is your first cluster stitch made chain two, skip the next chain one space and double crochet into the next stitch. Chain one, double crochet into the next double crochet stitch. We're now going to work our repeat. And your repeat begins with that chain four. So chain four, skip the next chain one space and work a cluster stitch over your next five stitches. Yarn over, insert your hook into the top of the next double crochet, yarn over and draw up a loop. Do that two more times into that same stitch. Then skip the next two chain one spaces and that double crochet in the middle. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next double crochet, yarn over, draw up a loop. Do that two more times. You'll have a total of 13 loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all 13. Chain two, skip the next chain one space double crochet into the next double crochet stitch, chain one, 
and double crochet into the next double crochet stitch. Repeat that all the way across to your final stitch, ending with your final double crochet being worked into the third chain of your starting chain four. At the end of your row four, work a double crochet into the third chain of that starting chain four. And you can chain four and turn your work. For row five, we're going to skip the first chain one space and double crochet into the next stitch. You're then going to chain two into the chain one there into your next cluster stitch. So that's just into the top here in this first chain space. You're going to work a bobble stitch. To work your bobble stitch, you're going to yarn over, insert your hook, into the top of your cluster, yarn over and drop a loop. Do that three times. Yarn over and draw through all the loops on your hook. Then chain three and work one more bobble stitch all into the top of that cluster, into that chain one. Yarn over draw through all the loops on your hook. And that completes your first little flower stitch. You're then going to skip the next chain four space and double crochet into the next double crochet stitch. Chain one and double crochet into the next stitch. You're then going to start your repeat beginning with a chain two and into the center of your next cluster stitch work one bobble stitch. Chain three and a bobble stitch. Double crochet into the top of the next double crochet stitch. Chain one and double crochet into the next double crochet. You're going to repeat that all the way across uh, where you're going to end with your last double crochet into the third chain of that starting chain four. For row six, you've chained four, turn your work, you're going to see your nice little flower stitches coming across there. Turn your work. For row six, skip that first chain one space and then double crochet into the top of the next double crochet stitch. Chain one, then into the next chain three space you're going to work a double crochet, so this is in between your two flower petals, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. I'm just going to go back there on my yarn split. Here we go, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet all into that same chain three space. Next chain one and double crochet into the next chain two space. Or sorry, your chain four space. Chain one and then double crochet into the next double crochet stitch. Chain one and double crochet into the next double crochet stitch. You're going to begin your repeat, chain one and into the next chain three space, so work a double crochet, chain one and double crochet, 
chain one into the center of your next, oh sorry, it is a chain two space there, into the center of your next chain two space, work a double crochet stitch, chain one, and then double crochet into your next double crochet, chain one and double crochet into the next double crochet. So we're starting to work our lace mesh here again. Continue to repeat that all the way across at the end, work your final double crochet into that third chain of your starting chain four, then chain four and turn your work. At the end of your row six, chain four and turn your work. For row seven, skip that first chain one space, double crochet into the next stitch, chain one, skip the next chain one space and double crochet into the next stitch. Repeat that all the way across, chain one, skip the next chain one space, double crochet into your next stitch, uh, repeat that all the way across and when you come to your final chain four, chain one and then double crochet into the third chain of your chain four. You can then chain four, uh, sorry at this time chain three and turn your work. At the end of row seven, chain three, which counts as a double crochet stitch and then turn your work. For row eight, the chain three counts as a double crochet stitch. You're going to double crochet into the next chain one space and then into the next double crochet stitch. Repeat that all the way across. Double crochet into the next chain one space and then into the top of the next double crochet stitch. When you're finished this row, you should have a nice row of double crochet stitches worked in each chain one space and stitch all the way across. At the end, you can chain four and turn your work. Once you have worked your row eight, you've come to the end of the repeat of the rows in this pattern. You're then going to repeat rows two through to eight. So your row two uh, began with this first row of double crochet chain one spaces. So if it can repeat that row two through to eight, the row that you just worked five more times. At that time, if you would like, you can fasten off and weave in your ends. Or, uh, as I'm going to show you here, you can leave your yarn attached and you're going to work an edging along each of these short rough ends of your shawl. So you're going to work this edging twice. If you've left your yarn attached, you can chain one. If you're refastening it, you're going to join with a slip stitch and chain one. Then you're going to have a much longer piece than I have here because I'm just showing you with uh, the one repeat. But you're going to join your yarn, chain one, and evenly work 87 single crochet stitches all the way across. So you'll work 87 single crochets. I'm obviously not going to work that many here today but you're just going to work your single crochets fairly evenly all the way across. If it helps, place a stitch marker about halfway and then you can work half on one side, half on the other, uh, but you want a total of 87 single crochet stitches all the way across the end of your shawl. At the end of the row one of the edging, chain three, which counts as a double crochet stitch, and turn your work. Row two, skip that first stitch at the base of your chain three, double crochet into your next stitch, 
and then into each stitch all the way across. When you come to the end of this row, you can chain one and turn your work. For row three, single crochet into that first stitch, skip the next two stitches and work five double crochet stitches all into the next stitch. There's one, two, three, four, and five. Skip the next two stitches and single crochet into the next stitch. Repeat that all the way across, skip the next two stitches, work five double crochets in the next stitch, skip the next two stitches and single crochet into the next. For row four, chain one and turn your work. Work one single crochet into the first stitch and then single crochet into each of the next three stitches. Next, work a pico in the same stitch. So to work your pico, you're going to chain three and then slip stitch back down. And I like when I'm working this, you can either slip stitch into that chain that first chain in your chain three, or I actually like to work it down into the uh, stitch itself, into the single crochet that's down below. I feel like it makes it a little bit tighter. So work your pico, then single crochet into each of the next six stitches. You should be at the top of that next, the center stitch in the next uh, set of five. Work a pico. And then repeat. Single crochet into each of the next six stitches. Then pico. And then single crochet into each of the next six. You're going to repeat that all the way across and then you're just going to single crochet into each of the final three stitches. I'm just going to continue working across one, two, three, four, five, and six. When you come to the end there, you're going to have three final stitches and that brings you to the end of your edging. At that time, you can then fasten off, weave in any ends, and then head over to the other side of your shawl and repeat the edging for the second side. And then your wildflowers shawl is complete. Thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial on how to work the wildflower shawl. Again, I invite you to take a look around, check out some of the other shawl patterns there, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. If you happen to make this shawl, I'd love to see a photo of it on social media, and you can tag Rich Textures Crochet. So have fun and happy crocheting, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye.